Coming up on Mustang News, Cal Poly students plan to walk out during Donald Trump's inauguration. And an eco-friendly app takes first place at the Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship's Hackathon. And later, we check out the new hardware Cal Poly brought home from the 128th Rose Parade. Broadcasting live from Cal Poly in beautiful San Luis Obispo, this is Mustang News. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us for Mustang News. I'm Michael Frank. And I'm Brian Robbins. Here are this week's top stories. Some of Cal Poly students are planning to walk out of class tomorrow at noon while Donald Trump is sworn in as the 45th President of the United States. Students across the country are expected to leave class for the National Student Walkout Against Bigotry and Hate. The Cal Poly Queer Student Union, Cal Poly Democrats, and Triota Cal Poly are just a few of the student groups involved in planning the walkout. Students will start the walkout at Dexter Lawn. No, I don't, I don't agree with, um, with how he is in general as a person. You know, I think a, a president needs to be very professional and, um, you know, straight, not straightforward, but, you know, they, they need to connect the people as a whole. I know when it comes to anything political, we have two different sides. And we're going to be seeing a lot of that with uh, this upcoming inauguration, as well with other things going on this quarter. But what we're hoping for as a student body at large is just for our students to be safe and know that their voice is getting heard and knowing that Cal Poly is a place for them. We are a Mustang family to all. There will also be a protest Friday night in downtown San Luis Obispo and a women's march Saturday morning at Mitchell Park. A new year means a set of new laws are now in effect. Connor McCarthy has a look at three of the most important laws to know in 2017. On January 1st, many new laws were enacted and some were rechacted. One of those laws being that the state of California minimum wage is now $10.50 an hour, giving some student workers, such as at here Red Radish and Mustang Station, a little bump in their paycheck. Cal Poly Corporation Executive Director and Associate Vice President of Commercial Services, Lori Lethem, explained that about 10% of employees in the campus dining sector of Cal Poly Corp will be getting a raise, and they are mostly students. However, there are some difficulties with the new minimum wage. We now have to consider the compression of the minimum wage against those employees and ensure that we create some um, d uh, difference between the base of the, the minimum wage and our full-time benefit employees. So we have to look at that, that whole thing and um, decide what we're going to do with it. An important yeah, law that was overturned was the use of marijuana. In the last election, California passed Prop 64, making it legal to purchase and carry the drug recreationally. As of January 1st, Californians still cannot purchase the drug, but anyone over 21 can possess up to 8 ounces and or 6 plants. University Police Department Police Chief George Hughes said the law doesn't change the drug policy on campus. You maintain a drug-free uh, school here at Cal Poly uh, or that could uh, negatively affect our uh, federal aid funding that we receive here on the campus. One final law to take note of is Assembly Bill 1788, which changes how a driver interacts with their cell phone while they're in their car. Previously, it was illegal to hold a phone call or send a text while driving, but this new law makes it illegal to even hold your phone while driving a vehicle. The phone has to be completely put away or on a mount, and you're allowed up to one single swipe. Chief Hughes explained why this law is important to keeping the roads safe. So anytime that you're looking at your cell phone, uh, if it's in your hand for whatever reason, you're not paying attention to the road. If you're caught holding your cell phone while driving, you can be issued a fine between $20 and $50. And if you'd like to take a look at any of the new laws that were enacted in 2017, you can visit San Luis Obispo County website. Connor McCarthy, Mustang News. When it comes to the legalization of marijuana, Chief Hughes reminds students, even if you're over 21, you cannot have pot on campus. If you are caught by UPD, you will get a citation. Coming up after the break, three Cal Poly students created a documentary on Moody, a community leader in Thailand. And the Cal Poly men's basketball team looks to overcome early season struggles ahead in sports. Everywhere that we go, he makes people laugh and makes people smile, and I feel like I have that quality. He's the one who always takes me fishing. I watch golf with him. And <laughs> I watch him cook, because when I grow up, I want to be a cook, too. We have the same faces like this. Dad is the one, when you fall, that picks you up. That unconditional sense of presence and um, reassurance is really what makes him my father. I 
A full life measured in seats starts with the right ones early on. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Learn how to prevent deaths and injuries by using the right car seat for your child's age and size. Emergency plan today. Uh, Hart, what's going on? I'm leaving. Why? What did I do? Not enough. You constantly ignore me. You barely eat anything healthy. You're half as active as you used to be. The pressure is just too much. I quit. Okay, I get it. I'll do better. Just please, don't leave. Okay. But remember, if I go, you go. Listen to your heart. Don't let it quit on you. Uncontrolled high blood pressure could lead to stroke, heart attack, or death. Get yours to a healthy range before it's too late. The Center of Innovation held their hackathon event this past weekend. Allison Martinez talked to one of the victors. From some of our calculations, we figured we could save Cal Poly around $700,000 annually if we got people participating in something like this. Fourth year business student Nicholas Sinai was part of the team that won CIE's hackathon this past weekend. The team developed an app that would send out daily challenges to encourage students to be more eco-friendly every day while tracking their progress. One challenge might pop up today that was, hey, turn off the lights before you leave your house. And uh, you would send in a short video of you doing so like a Snapchat. Sinai said they would then verify that video to receive special campus incentives depending on the student's streaks. And the idea was that instead of just saying, you get this number of points today, we really wanted to focus on helping students build the habits to be environmentally friendly um, so that once they stopped using the app or once they graduated from Cal Poly, they would actually have habits that would uh, translate to the environment in general. Cal Poly is talking to Sinai about ways they can use this app to make campus more sustainable. They have a lot of initiatives in place to kind of reduce each department's energy consumption. They're doing a lot there, so we thought we'd handle the student side, which they hadn't really seen yet. The team is excited to see where the app could go. And really, it'd be cool to just see it come to life and see students using it. Um, I think our biggest challenge will be making sure that it's fun enough and maybe making the challenges silly, like turn off the lights with your left toe today. I don't know. I don't yeah. know. But Allison Martinez, Mustang News. Students interested in contributing ideas or just helping out can reach out to Sinai at nsinai at calpoly.edu. Cal Poly Pomona and Cal Poly San Luis Obispo Rose Parade team won their 57th award at this year's Tournament of Rose, Roses Parade in San Pasadena. The two campuses teamed up to create this year's float, a new leaf. The float was certified, California grown, for having 95% of the flowers being grown in California. And many of those flowers came directly from the two Cal Poly campuses. The float also won the Founders Trophy for the most beautiful float. Ways to get all the mechanisms started and or finished. And then during fall, we had uh, Saturday lab days, both in San Luis Obispo and Pomona, where we just worked on the float, the design, decorations, and construction parts of the float itself, all leading up to design week, which is uh, one week of sort of a mad rush to finish everything off uh, construction and design-wise. We had to finish off the painting, foaming, shaping, and general float itself in order to send it off to Pasadena. The Rose Parade team will hold a design contest for next year's float in the coming months. If you want to get involved in next year's float, go to www.asi.calpoly.edu or visit the Rose Float office in the University Union. Three Cal Poly Three Cal Poly students can now call themselves documentary filmmakers after an inspiring visit to Thailand. Reporter Naba Ahmed gives a sneak peek at the film. Saw Law, a documentary about the life of Moody, a Lahu native in Thailand, was created by Daniel, Mikulin, and Nezrin. I was listening to the life story of one of our community members, Moody, and was just struck by the, the humanness of it in that I had never heard a story like that before in person. I can see, okay? Moody, who is 90% blind, left the life of an opium addict turned prison doctor and became a community leader. He is of Lahu ethnicity, which is one of the many ethnic group 
ethnic minority groups living in Southeast Asia. And so he was actually born and raised in Burma. And um, due to communism, opium trade, drugs, he ended up moving to Thailand. Um, and he's gone through a lot of things that have been really difficult in his life, such as going to prison, um, raising a large family, living in the hill tribes just in general, um, is, is very different than what we know in America. With the documentary, Ms. Ju wants to tell the story of Moody, as well as touch on the perspective of Westerners traveling internationally. What's a good way for us to travel and learn from each other rather than imposing our own ideals? Every culture is good for every nation, okay? We wanted to just capture that spirit of just making things happen. Um, because I think that's also a message that Moody conveys through his life. He really took everything in stride. Naba Ahmed, Mustang Muse. As of right now, the team has only released a trailer of their film. The full documentary will be available this spring. Coming up after the break, Connor McCarthy has your Mustang News weather report. The rain is back here on the Central Coast. How long will it last? I will let you know right after the break. Places, everybody. Light check. One, two, one, two. Everything looks good on our end. And lights. Come alive with the forest. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. It's a short ride from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. Emergency plan today. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. And welcome back. Let's take a look at the Doppler radar right here. It looks like rain is falling all across the state. Right down here in the central coast, there is rain falling. Even though this morning the sun did peek through, we did get a beautiful rainbow over Cal Poly's campus. Take a look right here. That's a gorgeous rainbow overlooking the studio right outside of our door right there. Rain was falling around the, uh, the county this morning as well as last week. The last storm that we got got between five to eight inches of rain around the county. But if we come back right now and look at current temperatures, uh, let's look at uh, South County here. We got Vandenberg down 57, mostly South County hanging around the upper 50s and lows in the um, upper 40s. And if we go down over the beaches, beaches, same thing, hanging around the uh, upper 50s, lower 40s for the lows. And as well as we go to North County right here in San Luis Obispo, current temperature is 56 degrees. We'll have a low tonight of 49. As you go up into the county, looks like we'll be going in the lower 50s as well and staying in the upper uh, 40s for the lows for tonight as well. And the rain will be sticking around. We have uh, rain going into Monday and Tuesday of next week. And our rain will be continuing as well this weekend on Saturday, Sunday, and as well as tomorrow on Friday. But the rain will be leaving us Wednesday and into Thursday, but we'll be getting some clouds back this Friday and keeping the temperatures all in the upper 50s and lower 60s. And let's go right back to the anchors, Michael and Brian. Coming up after the break, the women's basketball team is working hard to turn around a slow start to their season. And a film festival in downtown San Luis Obispo has a jam-packed, sold-out weekend. I'm a teacher. Let me tell you what I make. I make learning a privilege, not a chore, and frustration a tool, 
not an obstacle. I make working hard seem easy and giving up impossible. I make an old subject feel like a fresh thought and unconventional methods common. I'm a teacher. I make more. Good afternoon, I'm J.B. Garcia with the sports There's headlines you need to know this to week. Meet, meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. They told me a bottle couldn't dream. That I would never become a superhero. But I learned how to fly. Just to come back in a new disguise and be the hero that I've always wanted to be. Me and my boy Matt had it good. He had catnip that was off the hook. But one day, he brings a girl home and she's allergic to cats. Every sneeze was a nail in my coffin. Now I'm in a shelter. It's decent, but they don't even have Wi-Fi. Good afternoon, I'm JB Garcia with the sports headlines you need to know this week. The Cal Poly men's basketball team is off to a rough start this year. Kenny Campbell has more on why. The Cal Poly men's basketball team is off to a rough start this season, and their inability to win all but one of their games away from Ma Jim has been a major reason why. Even when you had a break, you didn't have a break from traveling. You traveled again while you went home for those four days off. Although Coach Calero believes that their road games will make the team tougher. And you get stronger, you get tougher. Uh, two, three years ago in the NCAA tournament, we played a lot of road games, we got tougher, we got more competitive, and by the end of the year, we were ready for the NCAA tournament. Captain Rich Shipley's leadership will be a key factor in turning around the Mustang season. Uh, Rich Shipley coming back as a senior, he's, he's had a very good year, both in terms of how he's played, how he's defended, but how he's been a leader. Coach Calero focuses on the bigger picture rather than trying to win every game. Well, I think the biggest thing is, is, is steady, steady improvement. What I don't want to see is any, any games where we just uh, drop through the floor and all of a sudden we have 20 turnovers or we, um, you know, our defense gives up 90 points. That doesn't necessarily mean you always win every game. Cal Poly will look to improve their road record next week against UC Irvine. Kenny Campbell, Mustang News. Cal Poly will look to improve their road record next week against UC Irvine. Kenny Campbell must. The Cal Poly men's basketball is currently 5-13 and and hosts Long Beach State this Saturday at 7 p.m. Our women's basketball team is having a similar issue on the road. Sports reporter Joe Schutz caught up with this team this week. Losses after being 2-0 in the Big West. Head coach Faith Manas says they have a lot to learn as they are 0-8 on the road. I thought that when we faced some of the really tough teams in the conference in Riverside and Long Beach State, that uh, there's definitely some things we still need to work on, but I thought overall we're heading in the right direction. Star junior guard Din Leo Pepe is off to a great start this season as she has already gotten Big West honors. Um, I think I've improved on being more patient and waiting for better shots to take within our offense and also communicating the best I can on and off the court, whether it's on offense or defense. Senior center Hannah Gilbert says one of the team's best aspects is their bond. Team-wise, we're much closer, like a small little family. So the chemistry's there, the love for each other's there. So that's really a great aspect for us. So. With all-around improvements, the team is confident about upcoming games. It's coming. It's coming. They return to Mott Gym tonight at 7 p.m. to take on the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors. Here's what to look forward to this week weekend in the rest of Cal Poly sports. Tonight, women's basketball, who are currently 6-10, and 10, take on Hawaii tonight at Mott Gym. The game, is, the game time is at 7 p.m. Tomorrow night, wrestling faces Wyoming at 7 o'clock at Mott Gym. Wrestling is coming off a 19-18 victory versus West Virginia, but a loss at Arizona State last Sunday. 
On Saturday night, both women's and men's basketball are in action. Women's basketball is on the road at CSUN at 4 o'clock, while men's basketball faces Long Beach State at home at 7 o'clock. The game will be nationally televised on ESPNU. Sunday afternoon, wrestling takes on Air Force in the Performing Arts Center's Harmon Hall. That's all we have for sports. Back to you guys at the desk. Coming up after the break, learn more about Orcas' dance company and their upcoming performance. Don't worry, 74 people were picked before me in the NFL draft. To fight childhood obesity, United Way and the NFL are helping kids play at least 60 minutes a day. Okay, time for the team obstacle course. Yay! What this place needs is more healthy kids. To get involved or donate, go to unitedway.org slash play60. Now I get it. This is the moment I knew. His future had no boundaries. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. Find yours at discovertheforest.org. When you're out there, there's no telling what you'll find. Look at you. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. <laughs> Find yours at discovertheforest.org. It's not labeled. The San Luis Obispo Jewish Film Festival's founders are already looking towards next year after selling out the Palm Theater last weekend. The seventh annual Jewish Film Festival went off without a hitch last weekend. For the sixth time in seven years, the festival sold out with tickets as low as $15 for the three-day event. Although it usually doesn't have a specific theme, co-director Lauren Bandari and the rest of her team believe they have a message each year. I would say generally the theme is just what our tagline is, celebrating cultural diversity, understanding different perspectives and bringing community together. That's our general theme. So um, we try to do that in a smart way, in a sophisticated way, and, and people love it. <laughs> the festival usually shows around seven movies each year. One of the most important reasons a movie is chosen, though, is that a filmmaker can attend the festival. There are question and answer sessions after the movies that allow the audience an inside perspective on each film. Co-director Maura Johnston is still helping to run the festival, even though she still isn't living in SLO. The irony of it is that I'm not even Jewish. I'm Catholic. So um, that was kind of a funny situation. And, um, and actually, three years ago, I moved away. I live in Florida now. But I work on the festival with Lauren all year, and then I come out for the festival because I just believe in it so much. Johnston summed up the festival perfectly with one simple sentence. The San Luis Obispo Jewish Film Festival is for everyone. Johnston and Bandari are already excited for next year. The film festival is one of many events put on each year by the JCC Federation of San Luis Obispo. Cal Poly seniors in the band Boxy Oxford recently released their first album on Spotify, over to Alina, who finds out more about the students playing the instruments. This is Box to Oxford with Davis Muxlow on the bass, which happens to be one of the only instruments he can hear. The only really interesting thing about me that I add to the band, uh, I'm mostly deaf. So I um, can't hear the high ranges at all, um, which is fine because I play bass. You guys are cute. 
When they're not jamming, they juggle school and work along with their commitment to the band. Especially with me being involved in engineering and stuff, I think it's super important for someone with a creative mind to stay doing creative things. Continuing those creative things past graduation this upcoming spring is something the band is already thinking about. Because the four of us are engineers, we kind of have jobs lined up, but at the same time, we're just trying to go all out in the next like six months or so before we graduate, um, see what opportunities come up, and if something presents itself, we're willing to uh, take the extra step and, and go there. Opportunities that include some memorable experiences when performing together. Fresh Pink concert series uh, last year. And at the very end of the show, there were these three girls, and one of them ran up to me and handed me a white rose and then ran away. <laughs> all in all, the band stays together through the weird, forming words of wisdom for those to come. I would say neglect school, because it doesn't matter as much. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> I want to say, like, Colton, stop diddling, or, like... It's not about you. <laughs> I most, would most likely end up being Colton sucks, actually. That's, yeah, that's definitely the most accurate thing. Although their last concert was canceled due to rain, the band will be performing in the UU soon. Elena Wasserman, Mustang News. Until that next show, all their songs are available on Spotify. Orcas' dance company is preparing for their 47th annual dance concert, Synergy. Reporter Gina Randazzo has more on why this team is learning more than just routines. What Orcas' dance company director, Christy McNeil Chand, wants Cal Poly students to know about Cal Poly's dance program is that there is one. It's something that is kind of seen as like, oh, that fun little after-school activity that isn't, you know, academic or anything. For the 30 dancers that make up Orcasis, dance is anything but a little after-school activity. In fact, the techniques that the dancers practice complement their variety of majors, from psychology to architecture to engineering. For the company's 47th annual concert dance performance, Synergy, the performers spend up to 25 hours a week practicing a variety of dance genres, including on-point ballet, modern, jazz, contemporary, hip-hop, and funk. The show will consist of 12 pieces, five of which are choreographed by Cal Poly students. Aerospace engineering sophomore Elizabeth Hawkinson will be performing in several of the pieces in Synergy. She said that dance has helped her better understand complicated concepts within her major. Because like taking my physics classes, there'll be like concepts that I already have a really good real world uh, connection to. And so they'll like click a lot better with me because I'm like, oh, like that's like what I turn or like momentum and like things like that. McNeil Chand added that these different perspectives prove attractive to employers too, as so much of dance is about the creative process and teamwork. You haven't just drawn space, you've actually lived space. Um, you've lived line. You understand texture and depth and art and the creative process. In order to change some people's perspective on dance as a serious field, McNeil Chand and other directors aim to up the rigor of the dance program at Cal Poly. To see the orchestra's dancers in action, tickets to Synergy can be purchased through the Cal Poly ticket office. Gina Randazzo, Mustang News. Synergy premieres Friday, January 20th in Alex and Faye Spanos Theater and runs on January 21st, 26th, 27th, and 28th. Thanks for joining us today on Mustang News. For more information, you can visit mustangnews.net. I'm Michael Frank. And I'm Brian Robbins. Thanks for watching and stay dry this weekend as we do expect a lot more rain. Isn't that right, Michael? Yeah, definitely bring out those umbrellas um, and... Some raincoats. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the main thing to really do, though, take away from all this, you'll be inside. So you should definitely be checking out mustangnews.net for all of the news stories that, I mean, involve San Luis Obispo. Absolutely. Thanks for tuning in.